Situated in a region rich in literary prominence, Sevier County's majestic scenery, rich folklore, and colorful characters have naturally inspired great authors and timeless stories. From Thomas Wolfe's mention of his mother's border, who hailed from Sevier, Tennessee, in his debut novel, Look Homeward Angel, to a father and son's journey from Knoxville south to the Smoky Mountains in Pulitzer Prize winner Cormac McCarthy's book, The Road, the stories set in Sevier County engage the imagination. It was the 1800s when our community first appeared in the record of Bishop Francis Asbury's journey through the mountains and his experiences in Sevier County. But it wasn't long before our beloved Smoky Mountains found their way into novels. Under the pseudonym Charles Egbert Craddock, Mary Murphy began writing about the mountains while spending summers at resorts in the Smokies. Although a few novels set in Tennessee's mountains preceded Murphy's writings, none equaled her ability to tell stories. She was the first Tennessee author to write extensively and well about the mountains. In 1899, E.W. Kozier published The White Caps, a history of the organization in Sevier County telling the story of the vigilante group that terrorized Sevier County in the late 1800s. Due to the nature of the subject and the political climate of the times, many read the book in secret and never talked publicly about it for fear of retaliation. Later, a Knoxville grocery magnate and politician, Kaz Walker, published the book, which he had edited heavily to protect members of his own family. The Whitecaps story has received renewed attention from authors as of late, including veteran newspaper man Robert Wilson, who released his book, The Eyes of Midnight, in 2016 after spending countless hours researching the once taboo subject. While Sevier County's history has served as literary inspiration, our famous Smoky Mountain scenery has as well. Frances Hodgson Burnett, author of The Secret Garden and Little Lord Fauntleroy moved with her family from England in 1865 and settled in Newmarket, Tennessee. She later lived in Knoxville and loved to visit the mountains, which are said to have been inspiration for some of her works, such as Esmeralda. Tennessee Williams, one of the most famous playwrights of the 20th century, spent part of his summer in 1926 at Elkmont. Williams was 15 when he and his family visited his uncle and aunt, William and Belle Brownlow. In his autobiography, Tennessee Williams Memoirs, he wrote, That summer, I learned to swim in a clear mountain stream. It was Aunt Belle who taught me, in a pool of fabulously cool, clear water formed by a dam, which offered a sparkling waterfall over bone-white rocks. Nature is central to Sevier County. Rushing streams, wide rivers, weathered mountains, hidden trails, all have made their way to the written page. In 1937, a history and guidebook titled The Great Smoky Mountains was published. Written by Laura Thornburg, the first printing sold out within a month. A revised and enlarged edition was reprinted in 1942 and again in 1956. The book went through nine printings, the most recent in 1967. In addition to her writing abilities, Thornburg was a skilled photographer. She and Knoxville photographer Jim Thompson worked together trying to convince politicians that the Great Smoky Mountains would be an excellent site for a national park. Her summer home was located on what is known as Berg Hill, near those of Anna Porter, who founded the library in Gatlinburg, and Jeanette Grieve, who, like Thornburg, published about the area. The neighbors were but three of many women who found Gatlinburg a hospitable environment in which to work and live. With the success of her guidebook, The Great Smoky Mountains, Thornburg began a new career 
as a lecturer and respected authority on the Great Smoky Mountains. The changing boundaries of the park, construction of new trails, and updating new editions of her book took the place of her previous work as a motion picture editor. Critically acclaimed and beloved author Wilma Dykeman published more than 16 books, including The French Broad, which was released in 1955. One of the famous Rivers of America series, Dykeman completed the book in a year. However, the work represented a lifetime of observation. It recounts the history, legend, biography, sociology, and economics of the mountain region that draws its life from the French Broad and its tributaries. In the book, Sevierville is mentioned six times, Sevier County five, Pigeon Forge two, and Gatlinburg once. The Little Pigeon River is mentioned five times. The French Broad was praised by environmentalists and is sometimes compared to Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. American novelist, playwright, and screenwriter Cormac McCarthy grew up in Knoxville, attended the University of Tennessee, and married fellow student Lee Holloman in 1961. They moved to Sevier County to live in a shack with no heat nor running water. By 1973, his third novel, Child of God, was released, receiving critical praise. Set in Sevier County in the 1960s, Child of God tells the story of Lester Ballard, a disposed violent man whom the narrator describes as a child of God, much like yourself perhaps. Ballard's life is a disastrous attempt to exist outside the social order. In a 1992 interview, McCarthy stated that the character Ballard was based on was an unnamed historical figure. Despite its surreal focus, Child of God contains much unobtrusive historical detail about Sevier County, including references to the White Caps. Ballard's grandfather is said to have been a White Cap. In 2012, James Franco began shooting a film adaptation of Child of God, which was released in 2013. In a situation where real life imitates art, the body of author Jenny Bennett was discovered on Monday, June 8, 2015, above Campsite 31 in the Greenbrier section of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. In 2012, Bennett wrote a novel titled Murder at the Jump Off, in which the remains of an off-trail hiker were found not far from the same place she died. Through the years, numerous other writers, both native-born and those who simply love the area, have been inspired to write about Sevier County and its people. Sevierville native Dolly Parton, an internationally acclaimed singer-songwriter, instrumentalist, actress, and philanthropist, as well as author, launched Dolly Parton's Imagination Library in 1995 to benefit the children of Sevier County. Parton's vision was to foster a love of reading among her county's preschool children and their families by providing them with a gift of a specially selected book each month. By mailing high-quality, age-appropriate books directly to their homes, she wanted children to be excited about books and to feel the magic books can create. We send these books to them in their little name, with their name on it. They look forward to going to the mailbox. This is theirs. This is mine. So I am going to either learn to read it or I'm going to make somebody teach me how to read it. Dolly Parton's Imagination Library has gone from just a few dozen books to over 80 million mailed to children in the United States, Canada, and Britain. Already, statistics and independent reports have shown Dolly Parton's Imagination Library drastically improves childhood literacy for children enrolled in the program. Further studies have shown improved scores during early literacy testing. On February 27, 2010, the first Rose Glen Literary Festival was held at Walter State Community College, Sevier County campus. The purpose of the Rose Glen Literary Festival is to showcase local writers while simultaneously educating the public on area literary heritage and creating a venue for residents sharing an interest in literature. Sevier County continues to inspire new stories 
with a rich culture and colorful characters, enough to fill a hundred more libraries.